So we're continuing our thinking. So here's the distribution of p hat. We're thinking approximately normal, centered on p. So that means if we go plus or minus 1.96 sigma, uh, that'll be 95% of the p hats that fall in this range here. And if we took one of them, say this one here, and we add and subtract 1.96 sigma, well, as long as you're within 1.96 sigma of p, then if you take it and add and subtract 1.96 sigma like this, then one of those directions will reach out and capture p in the interval. So as we get closer and closer to the edge, we, do, we get closer and closer to not capturing p. Once I cross over here, we would miss it. So we had picked a, a p head out here and then gone that same distance on each side. Uh, we don't quite make it, but if we pick a p hat that's in this plus or minus 1.96 distance away from p, which is 95% of the p hats, when I go plus or minus that distance, one side or the other is going to capture the true value of p. So it says that means that with a margin of error of 1.96 sigma, p hat plus or minus the margin of error will capture p for 95% of sample proportions. Now all we have to do is build that margin, find that sigma so we can build the margin of error. Now sigma looks like this for p hat. It's p1 minus p over n square root. Now p is what we'd like to know. We don't actually know it, but we're probably close to it with p hat. So what we'll do is we just put p hat in here, into the formula, and it will make a slight mistake, but nothing too serious. So we estimate that by that. And then we create the confidence interval then p hat plus or minus the margin of error. It's 1.96 times an estimate. So this is the estimated, um, estimated sigma. So I think the idea there is uh, n has to be pretty large for this to work. And then this thing here is pretty close to that thing there. And you can't make big mistakes here, it turns out. It's hard for this to be too far away from the right answer. It's a lot easier for a p hat to be not close. But this, you put the wrong p hat in here, you don't get that big a mistake in, in the sigma. Sigmas don't vary that much from p hat to p hat. So uh, a p hat can vary a lot, but sigma for it stays about the same size. So this thing here does a good enough job. So I could take two of them, well, not two, 1.96, as a margin of error on each side of p hat, and that interval then has a good chance of covering up the true value of p. So we'll say that means the true value of p is probably in the interval. And the uh, probably is for 95% of samples. That's where the 1.96 comes in. So in our example, when we compute that, we get 4680. I think that was right. Yeah, 4680 plus or minus 1.96. Then we put p hat, 1 minus p hat over n was 500. That comes out 02231 times 1.96, just about 2, a little bit less. 0 0.437, let me look at that. That feels like it might be 0, 2, 2, 3, 1 times 1.96. 4, 3, 7, 2, okay, so I, I wouldn't have predicted that, I know 2 would give 0, 4, 4. I didn't think it would make, well, not that big a difference, I guess. So we get a margin of error right here of 0, 4, 3, 7. And ordinarily, what we'll do then is we'll just convert that into an actual interval. We'll take 4680, we'll subtract that off. So 0.4680 minus 0 0.0437. That gives me 0 0.4243. I take 4, 4680 and add 0 0.4437, I get 0.5117. So we expect the true population proportion to fall in that range. So we say this uh, should contain p. At least most of the time we do this process, the interval contains p. So we're thinking that one probably contains p. It's at 95% that makes us think that. And then we go, well, wait a second. So OK, that's fine. But I was wondering whether this, this uh, ballot measure might pass. And 
So it looks like we can't tell because the two proportion might be bigger than 50% because the top end of this is 51%. Or it might be less than 50% because the top end of this is less than 50%. So uh, there's a possibility it would pass if it went to the, the country to vote on. There's also a possibility it wouldn't pass. So we don't have enough information because the sample size is too small for us to make a, a, a decision about whether we think the ballot measure would pass based on the data collected from only 500 people. And you know, when they're thinking it, there might be a close call in a ballot initiative, they never use sample size 500. They use sample size more like 3,000. Larger sample sizes give you more precision and it makes it easier to figure out exactly what the answer is going to be at the end of the day because it shrinks this margin of error down to something where maybe you can tell if things are, things are close, whether 0.5 is in the interval or not, or whether, sorry, whether the interval stays away point from 0.5 on the low side or the high side, because it'll be narrower with a larger sample size. So if you were the pollster, you'd say to the people wondering what the answer was, I can't tell, it's too close to call, they would say. We can go do another sample with maybe 2,000 individuals, and maybe that might shrink the size of the interval down so that we could then uh, make a determination, but right now, it's called too close to call. You might have heard that on TV when you're watching the uh, elections. They say, well, this particular election is too close to call. And that's because they're computing a confidence interval based on the data they've collected. And um, the interval straddles both sides of one half. And so it's not guaranteed to pass or fail. You have to wait and see. And we're going to wait and see for the next slide. <laughs>